And especially have you like to play as well. Sounds great. Thanks. Well, you sound mighty fine also. Steve Bowen finishing up his uh, comm checks with Charlie Hoball, Capcom down in Houston. Yeah, so the pilot and commander each have a seat, and depending on which way the vehicle rolls, they're the guy who gets the really good view of the coast of Florida as they pull away. Um, there are some overhead windows, uh, MS-1 and MS-2, but with the helmets kind of obscuring, I'm not sure how much of a view those guys actually get on, on ASN. I'm sure they can see a little bit out the front window, um, but their job is really to kind of pay attention to the, to the computer screens in front of them, see what's, what's going on with the vehicle. We'll have plenty of time for looking out the window later. Well, we're, we're down Sounds like the uh, T-38 uh, weather officer, Lee Archambault, has uh, taken off. It's going out to have a look at the weather here locally. Looks like we uh, could end up with a good day for launch. And let's see, looks like we have one more crew member in the white room to go in. Yeah, MS2, Mike uh, Good, uh, he gets the good deal. He doesn't have to... Uh, you know, OTC, MS4, come check. MS4, this is OTC. I have you loud and clear. Good morning, Epi. Morning, That's Pierce Sellers. Yeah. Three hours. yeah, so uh, we're three hours from launch, uh, just a little under, and so uh, some of these guys have already been sitting on their back for, for a little while. So uh, being MS2 and being the last one in to kind of sit in that uncomfortable position. MTD, MS4, come check. And MS4, I've got you loud and clear. Good morning, Pierce. Is not a bad deal. Can you move around in your seat at all, or is it pretty tight? It's pretty, it's pretty tight depending on where you're sitting. You can wiggle and try to find a more comfortable position. Houston, MS4, come check. Hey, good morning, Piers. We're just enjoying your accent down here. How do you have us? Loud and clear, sir. Right. Very good. Uh, most of the seats you can move around in, but actually, Piers Sellers, who you've just heard doing his comm check, uh, getting a hard time about his uh, accent from uh, Charlie Hoball in Houston. Uh, he's actually in the seat pressed up kind of against the galley, and he's a fairly good, big guy, and um, you're kind of constantly tilting with your left shoulder mashed up against the galley, and that can get a little bit, of un little bit uncomfortable. So, uh, and he's one of the guys who's been in there for a fair amount of time. So uh, by the time the orbiter is... Uh, ready to go, you're, you're ready to get off your back, get, you have your feet up in the air, you kind of have the neck ring digging into the back of your head, uh, you're, you're really ready to go. So Mike Good's not complaining about not being in there right now. He's uh, out there visiting with the, uh, the closeout crew and uh, just waiting his turn and ha happy to be standing up right now. How soon is it usually after you're on orbit that you get a clear from Mission Control that you can take your launch and entry suits off? Oh, well, today, uh, being a daytime launch, these guys will be getting video and the still fix pictures of the uh, external tank. So instantaneously, as soon as uh, the main engine cuts off, they have uh, just a few minutes to get out of their seat, grab a couple cameras, get up to the flight deck, and uh, start taking pictures. So with the exception of the uh, commander and the pilot, uh, and... Okay, we want to go ahead and get you set up for step 684. Quali's en route to channel 153 for you. Yeah, so with the exception of the uh, commander and pilot and MS-2, most of the guys are up and moving around very, very quickly. And uh, actually, the guys down in the mid-deck will be getting out of their ACES uh, pretty quickly after getting an eight-and-a-half-minute ride to orbit. Were you able to see that on your flight at all, the, the tank going away? Or no, we launched just at dusk, and uh, so we launched into the night, and so we were not able to get any images of it. Yes, the, uh, indeed, the T-38 is up now, starting to take a look around, so we're hoping that they don't have much to see. <laughs> so. Absolutely. Uh, you verify Lee Archambault's out there flying the T-38 weather aircraft, and he's actually going around to different areas in the site, taking a look at the cloud cover and uh, winds uh, for, in case, just for launch and also RTLS constraints, or re if they have to return to Kennedy Space Center for some reason uh, shortly in the mission. There's Garrett uh, hamming it up before he gets his gloves on down in the lower left corner. Uh, 
It looks like we're uh, getting close to Mike Good getting ready to be put in there. You can see I said it was a little warm up there. He's actually uh, hooked up to some, uh, looks like he's hooked up some cooling while he's standing there uh, trying to keep some air and uh, water flowing through his suit. It's probably a little warm up there today. Um, so he's happy to be standing still trying to keep cool. And what you get aboard, is, is, there, can you, is there water handy? I mean... There's a, you actually can hook up your suit to get, uh, we have cooling loops inside of the orange suit uh, that uh, provide cooling. And uh, so you can hook up to the orbiter and that'll provide some cooling. Right now it looks like uh, Bueno, you can see, has that white tube hooked up to his chest. He's probably just blowing air through his suit right now just to keep cool airflow. Um, but, you know, once it starts to get warm here in Florida, you guys know it can get pretty warm. Uh, we launched in uh, March and uh, so the cockpit was fairly cool. But I imagine it's been sitting out there in the sun this week and uh, it's warmed up quite a bit. And uh, would they have drinking water once they're strapped in? Do they have access to a drink? They probably uh, can't. Yeah, they can get some water up until the ASP gets ready to leave and they get ready to close out the uh, hatch. Everything will then be stowed for launch, uh, and then they just have to wait until they get to orbit, and they'll have drinking water very handy right when they get there. It looks like uh, Bueno, Mike Good's getting ready. The uh, guy with the number three has been, uh, that crew has actually been working with these guys all through training. They're assigned uh, kind of to the crew when the crew's assigned, and they show up at the, all the training events where they're suited and kind of go through the whole choreography every single time, make sure the suits are fit, fitting just right. These aren't individually uh, custom-made, tailored suits. They are kind of off-the-rack pressure suits. They're not. They, they're uh, not tailored to you. No, we try to find one that's the closest fit, and these guys do a really good job uh, making sure that they, you're you're nice and comfortable and that you got all the equipment materials you need and they know just how it's supposed to fit you so they've been following along with these guys for quite some time hawk's trying to get a look at something uh got a couple mirrors going on and uh yeah it'd be nice to have a little bit of audio maybe it wouldn't right now <laughs> I guess when you can't turn your head, can't move around, a mirror's not a bad thing to have. It's yeah, there's actually some panels Tony has to get a look at on his uh, lower right-hand side that uh, there's some... OTC, MS-1, contact. MS-1, this is OTC. I have you loud and clear. Good morning. Big G, Charlie Charlie. Good morning, Mother. Good to hear you. Glad to have you on board this morning. Garrett Reisman getting a comm check. Yeah, so there's some actually some talkbacks on some switches back behind, uh, right over Tony's right shoulder that he can't really turn his head to see with the helmet on. MS-1, come check. MS-1, this is NTD. I've got you loud and clear. Good morning, Garrett. Good morning, Jeremy. Good to hear you. And they'll use these mirrors uh, for taking a look at that. Houston, MS-1, come check. Hey, good morning, Garrett. We got you loud and clear. How us? Good morning, Scorch. You're sounding especially handsome this morning. You scared me, dude. Thank you for using your sexy voice. Mike Good has his, uh, he's been... MS2 on board at Taking off cooling, has his comm cap on, and he's making his way in through the hatch of Atlantis. That's actually, you can see the hatch there with Atlantis written down the side, and... 1531. Excellent. Thank you. And so Mike Good coming into view uh, in the MS2 seat. And uh, Chris Cassie will start working on him here shortly. So it's not always the same closeout crew members in the white room from flight to flight. It varies some yeah, if it'll they're vary. assigned to a mission. Exactly. The guys, uh, the guys who actually, the suit technicians, I guess is the word I'm looking for, uh, which is part of the kind of the closeout crew. The suit technicians are basically assigned to the crew, and uh, they'll be working more than one mission at a time. But they're the guys who are coming out to training events whenever we're suited, uh, wearing these orange suits. They'll be there supporting, and uh, they really uh, know the equipment. They kind of know what's worked and what hasn't worked, and they do a really outstanding job um, getting us ready to fly and making sure we have all the proper equipment we need to get up there safely. <laughs> 